welcome back everyone it's me matt thank you so much for joining me today we're talking about tank collections and tank collectors specifically some that have got themselves into some really hot water in the recent months now as you may be aware that i am a avid supporter of uh, collecting armored fighting vehicles if you're a personal or private entity uh, as well as you know museums and such i support museums i support those who wish to you know advocate and, and promote history of armored fighting vehicles because unfortunately if they're not looked after or if they're not actually taken under the wing by someone they're going to go to a scrap metal pile and of course no one actually wants that but unfortunately when you start collecting things that you're not really supposed to have it gets a little technical and also under the realms of the law really really illegal <laughs> Um, unfortunately, there has been some recent articles, and one which I'm going to start off today, uh, of people who have been doing some pretty silly things uh, when it comes to collecting this kind of equipment. Because at the end of the day, when we talk about collecting armored fighting vehicles, you think of, you know, an old World War One or World War II tank or something like that, or maybe a little bit more modernized. But at the end of the day, if they're not decommissioned, they're not turned into declassified as weapons, uh, they are still an entity that could be utilized in a dangerous setting. We've all heard of, you know, unfortunately, the Killdozer. I'm not going to get too much into the technicalities of that uh, but you know people can weaponize just about anything nowadays I mean you talk about trapped fighting vehicles they can do a lot of damage very very quickly now the first article I'd like to talk a little bit about today is one you may have not heard of uh, a large haul of armored fighting vehicles and other military vehicles have been hauled up by a British Army Major Michael Watley uh, and he's uh, been doing some silly things. The former soldier who served with the Household Cavalry Regiment, a very distinguished and, of course, highly decorated uh, regiment in the British Army, uh, was given a suspended prison sentence recently, uh, within the uh, month of August of this year, uh, for acquiring up to 24 vehicles. Now, Watley tricked authorities in Germany and Belgium and Sweden into giving him the weapons before selling them off and trading them with other collectors. He fooled a Belgian military museum and the government of Sweden and Germany into believing they were donating them to the Household Cavalry Museum. So this is also a very shady situation, okay? This isn't a genuine collector. Genuine collectors go through the appropriate channels, the appropriate measures to do things by the book. When you're talking about armored fighting vehicles, we're talking about hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds or, or dollars on these pieces of equipment. And they're assets. They are worth a lot of money and therefore can make you very rich very quickly. If you're doing things under the book, you have something to hide. Therefore, it's in your best interest or agenda to become rich or to have a collection that's not really by the book. And that's not a good thing. I don't advocate for that. I think it's actually wrong. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, Mr. Watley, you know, is being caught and burnt for this. And rightly so. You know, don't do things correctly. This is what happens. And it it puts a tarnish on those who do things correctly. You know, the private collectors, and that's why prices of private collections go up, because people like this are hoarding things that really should either be done by the book or sent to a museum. Now, the 65-year-old originally denied any wrongdoing, but changed his plea to guilty in July of this year, uh, ahead of the scheduled trial in October. So he's no, he knows what he's done, right? Uh, he was disgraced branded by a judge at a Salisbury Crown Court in England who handed him a two-year prison sentence suspended for two years for three counts of misconduct in a public office. Nicholas Hagen, QC prosecuting, said it was a long and difficult investigation which revealed that over many periods of years had abused his rank in the trust and responsibility responsibility placed in him to acquire historical vehicles for his own private collection. He did this by falsely claiming to act on behalf of the Household Cavalry Museum when he was being paid to advance rather than undermine the national interest. He knew very well he couldn't have got these any of these vehicles if he had told the truth about what he was doing. He added he corresponded with embassies using Household Cavalry Division's headed no paper, not a good idea, and used military vehicles to transport his fraudulently acquired collection to an army depot in Lugasol, Wiltshire, 80 miles from the Household Cavalry Museum. So you're almost pooping on your own doorstep at this point. Like you're doing everything under the books and, and you know, shady right next to the Household Cavalry Museum. And, and to really disgrace the name and tarnish the name of the Household Cavalry really is what upsets me about this situation because the gentleman really is out for his own best interest and he's doing it through forgery and, and sort of, you know, just doing things completely wrong and dragging the household's name through it as well, the cavalry, you know? An armored regiment, a pre prestigious household cavalry armed regiment is just not a good thing, right? And it's just ridiculous, you know? Some of the vehicles that this guy picked up is, is really interesting though. When the authorities showed up to his depot and his own personal address, they found a Leopard 1A1 tank, a Gepard anti-aircraft gun, an M108 howitzer, troop transport vehicles, an M41 Walker Bulldog, a Saladin armored car, and some motorbikes. There was also four T-72s from the government of Germany, a Leopard Barge Panzer tank, 
an Armada vehicle. And while from Sweden, he also had an Army Infantry vehicles and an IKV-91. The court heard he kept some of the vehicles in his own collection, while others he sold and others he used to, quote, sweeten the deal in exchange transactions. Three of the T-72 tanks he sold for £15,000 each, which to me is a bargain for T-72s. That's pretty good value. I mean, for here, that would be about... 36 37,000 Canadian dollars, but each of these was sold on the buyer for 122,000 pounds to an American company. So he's selling them for cheap because obviously it's black market under the under the radar, but they're being sold to buyers for like quadruple cost, like ridiculous amounts of cost uh, to an American company. And it's just it makes me sad. Um, it is also noted that a large number of household cavalry division soldiers and officers were interviewed in the probe, and while most had no idea what was happening, some had raised concerns and even told him to stop what he was doing. Now, that's really concerning for me. Now, I'm not going to get involved in the legal applications of this particular incident or case, but there's some really shady things going on here. This guy's not doing it just on his own. There's other people involved in this, I'm sure. Uh, when interviewed by police, though, he denied any wrongdoing and claimed he was authorized by the source of vehicles that he was getting from. Judge Andrew Burnett said he tried to brazen the lie. Uh, Barrister Tom Wilkins, on behalf of Watley, said he rose from the rank of private to become major in one of the most prestigious regiments in the British Army and was highly thought of with those who knew him in the army. Uh, I'm sorry, what does that mean? That means nothing. If anything, you're kicking yourself in the teeth more. You know, your prestigious uh, regiment that you're dragging through the dirt, you mean, uh, and was highly thought by those who knew him in the army. Probably those who were in under the books and getting the money out of it. <laughs> Just... It's baffling to me. Um, you know, the judge took none of it, though. He, quote, said, You are a disgrace. You are a very distinguished man and a major in one of the oldest regiments of the British Army. These charges outline your systemic dishonesty and fraudulent behavior, unquote. So, you know, they, they weren't going to take it. They, they were not happy at all that they'd done this. Uh, so the judge did hand him a two-year prison sentence, suspended for two years, adding, You may leave this court with your head hanging in shame, knowing that this will be hanging over you for two years. Uh, Watley was also ordered to contribute £1,500 towards astronomical prosecution costs and given a work order of 150 hours unpaid. Uh, I'd give him 150 hours worth of track bashing on, uh, <laughs> on all the vehicles that he'd, uh, that he'd you know, acquired or hoarded. Uh, no compensation was ordered by the judge, slapped Watley with a forfeiture of all vehicles and items obtained by him, and these now be uh, may be repatriated. So where these vehicles go is going to be interesting. Um, you know, I, I, I would be a very happy um, owner if, uh, if they're interested in a Gepard. You know, I wouldn't mind taking a couple of their... Uh, you know, two times 35 millimeter automatic cannons off the side of that thing, you know. Um, but honestly, though, I'm not too sure where they're going to go. Probably a museum, but it's it's fascinating seeing that these kind of things happen and that people think they get away with stuff like this. I mean, you can't hide tanks that well. Uh, and when it comes to selling them on, you know, it's really sort of shady black market deals at that point. The irony is, though, that there was actually also a German tank collector that uh, made some rather interesting collections in his basement. Yes, a German man, if you've not tracked this article already, kept a World War II era tank in his underground garage for decades. Uh, whether the now elderly man faces criminal charges and what happens to the tank is likely to depend on how functional it is to us of today. Um, acting on a tip about stolen Nazi art, German investigators raided a home near the northern German city of Kiel in 2015. Instead, they discovered an underground garage containing a World War II era Panther tank. Yes, the beautiful Panther, torpedoes, mortars, anti-aircraft guns, and more than 1,500 rounds of ammunition and other weapons. In Germany, weapons of war, as you probably are well aware, are strictly regulated under the War Weapons Control Act. The penalty faced by the owner and the future of the tank and the other equipment depend on the operational capability of the vehicle and equipment, because, of course, if it's still weaponized, that's not good. If it's decommissioned, there is some, you know, I guess a little bit of leeway, but at the end of the day, this guy's also in a lot of trouble. Now, I'm not going to get deep into the art that article, because uh, I know there's a lot of sort of videos on it already, uh, but it just goes to show, you know, we can see people's pride and passion into these vehicles and why they want them. But at the end of the day, do things by the book. Uh, and, you know, museums will, at the end of the day, get better use and capabilities. I mean, what's this guy going to do with this panther in the basement? Like, nothing. It's going to sit there and either rust or, or just have no capability of doing anything that it really should be doing, which is educating the public and showcasing the vehicle to show what this beautiful machine is and what it can do and potentially you know there may be even museums that it can go to where it can be turned into something that's functional again and now i'm not trying to discredit people who do have personal collections saying what's their property and blah 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 
But unfortunately, the rules are the rules. Just like, you know, my firearms that uh, come under the Canadian government restrictions now with my AR-15 and such, it, it is what it is. I know there's realms of of trying to uh, disagree with those acts and those rules, and that's a different story. But at the end of the day, you know, if you're doing things shady, someone eventually will uh, get involved in, in the legal terms for equipment like that. It's military equipment. We're not talking about stamps and coins here. We're talking about, you know, <laughs> vehicles that have, you know, large pieces of uh, ordnance or arm on there that could be weaponized in worst case scenarios. I mentioned earlier, you know, the situation with the killdozer, it was a bulldozer turned into a weapon. Uh, that's just a bulldozer. We're talking about now tanks, armored fighting vehicles, infantry fighting vehicles that could do a lot of damage if not uh, respected in the right context. And I'm not trying to say these people would do those sort of things, uh, although those who have private collections do, but just follow it by the book. You know, if I get a CVRT, if in the future, and I hope to goodness I do, if I ever get the money to do so, uh, I would love to, to own myself. And it is a, literally a bucket list dream. Uh, to own a CVRT, any form of tracked vehicle, but we'll see in the future. So if you are a collector, if you want to collect vehicles, guys, do things by the book, uh, so you're not going to get a knock on the door with a Challenger 2 barrel pointing in your face saying, hey, I heard you had a uh, couple of uh, anti-tank guided weapons platform vehicles in the backyard. Uh, we'd like to have a little chat with you. I'm going to see like a British officer helmet placed on top of the Challenger 2. Have you got a license for that? But it's a, it's a tank instead. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. Uh, leave me a like and hit that subscribe or bell button. And thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon and PayPal. All the best. Bye-bye.